Okay, so in the last class, I explained uh, some of uh, process, the BA process. Okay, as I explained. You remember in the first session we discussed about BA process. Okay. All right. Let me open it. Okay, I hope everyone able to see the complete screen. Yes, we can see. Okay, so this is what we discussed in the last class, how the data is coming from source and what we are doing as a BA process from end to end, taking the data from the application that's storing the data in some application in one storages account from there we are processing our BA process end-to-end -end BA process we are extracting the data from different storages different files and then followed by we are loading this data through your components called SSIS or a data factory and followed by again we required ETL developers or ETL development to move this data to the data marts or to move this data into the cubes or to move this data into summarized or aggregated data in separate DB. You are not only just working as this part visualizations, you are also working as a ETL development, data movement, data cleaning. Okay. To overcome all this on premise structure, to overcome all this structure, what we are doing, we are implementing the concept called Azure. Okay, so we are implementing the concept called Azure. So instead of purchasing all individual license, individual keys, purchasing the complete product. So what Microsoft suggested, they are asking for visit to their portal. In the portal, you will find all these kind of services. All these kind of softwares we are calling their ad services. And you are going to pay only the use amount. You are not using in the Night times, you don't need to pay. If you are not running the data factory, you don't need to pay. How much you are using it, how much you are storing it, how much you are running the query, you have to pay only that amount. Even though you use as enterprise, you use as a premium accounts, only when it works, then you have to pay. That is in the public cloud. So I explained in the last session what is public cloud, private cloud, and hybrid cloud. So you are acting like a virtual. You just required two things. One is your system to start with this project. Other one is internet, okay? One is your system. Other one is internet. And one system and one is log. Are you log? To work with this kind of any project. So whatever the data they are storing it. Back end, they have a data center. Back end, they have a physical data center. Even if you are storing in your Azure, even if you are storing in your drives, Google drives, the photos, images, where you are storing it, those are stored in the physical data centers. Those are stored in the physical data center, but you are acting like a virtually. So, so we have different cloud providers in the current market. Azure is one of them, which is from the Microsoft product. 
same way we have AWS that is a uh, Amazon AWS. The same way we have GCP Google Cloud Provider. Yes, definitely there are other cloud providers also there, IBMs or other private clouds, which this kind of service, which this kind of product currently they don't provide. Storages, yes, definitely they provide. So among these, we are mostly focusing on our BA profile, our data analyst, data engineer. So whatever the data you want to extract, this is the internal part of this development. If you see a high level picture, I told you in the last session, this is your high level of picture. Okay. So this is how we need to implement this one. So if you talk about extraction by using the data factory. So we are discussing the internal part of this one, data factory. If you go inside the data factory, you will find this picture. So this is what we need to implement here. So what we are implementing by using the data factory, we are extracting the data from the different sources by using your pipeline. We are loading the data in different servers, in different targets. And from there, the reporting will be done and that will be displayed into different formats by report developers. So if you talk about the internal part, this is what we need to implement. In data factory, you have to implement one pipeline. That pipeline contains is all connections, is all activities, data sets, link to service. Okay, so let's implement this one. So to start with this, as I told, you require some basic things, internet system and login. And in the login also, there are three to four modules of login. One is free account, we call as subscription. Other one is pay as you go. It is a premium. Another one is student account. Student account. So whatever you are accessing from a cloud, it is not a free of cost. You have to pay from your pocket. That is what when you log in, Microsoft is giving to you as a 200 USD dollars. 200 USD dollars. It is equivalent to 13 to 14,000 credits in INR. So you no need to pay from your pocket. Microsoft giving you 200. You cannot withdraw this amount. So the moment you create account, they are giving you some amount to work to elaborate the services what they provide in the Azure. So same way, if you go with a student account, Microsoft giving you 100 USD dollars. Okay. It's going to give you 100 USD dollars. And company people, they use as a premium account, which is going to pay monthly billing. Monthly billing. It's going to charge from your main account. So I'm going to explain from this account. And also I'm going to explain you how to use, how to create these two accounts. Internet you have, system you have. Just go and start creating login and work. No other tools, no other softwares are required. Except the SQL server. No physical software are required. Whatever you do, you do in the Azure only. Okay, so how to log in? Let's go to this browser. I need to achieve this requirement. So first I required data factories required. We required storages, we required files, we required physical databases. Then I can develop the reports. These all components are required. Let's come by one by one by one. Can we create storages for temporary? Okay, you don't need to create a real time. For practicing to overcome this picture, I'm just showing you how to create. 
you're only going to work on data factory some storages. Now see here, where is my browser? This is the browser. So I just log into azure.com. Okay, azure.com, if you want to try for free, click on try Azure for free. It's going to give you some sort of services which is always free, 12 months and additionally they're giving you credits which can be used this many services and other services also. But for in our case, I have an account. So if you have an account, you can just directly log into the portal.azure.com. So this is the place I'm going to work my development. These are the list of services we have, all services. So when you see the Amazon Flipkart, what happened here? If you see here, in Amazon, you will find categorized. In a proper categorized, you'll have what you want, electronic products, clothing, some other gadget, books, other things. The same way, our Azure also, our cloud also, divided into different categories. One is infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, software as a service any cloud they are divided into three different platforms infrastructure as a service platform as a service software as a service so whatever the physically involvement like a storing the data maintenance input units physical ram physical disk that all comes as the infrastructure Nowadays, company are moving towards the cloud because of infrastructure, because of the maintenance. People are moving towards the cloud. This, that is the reason. They don't want to make a most costly under the maintenance, under the infrastructure, separately set up. You don't want. So to reduce the infrastructure service, they are using these platforms in the Azure. Platform as a service, the software is like SQL Server, you're using it, operating system, you're using it, other things, other software, you're using it. Those all are platform as a service that will help you to work some development. But that also you have to purchase. If you, if whatever you're using in your laptop, that is a cracked version of operating system. That is not a genuine product. If you take genuine product Windows, it will be costly. If you take SQL Server Enterprise, it is a very costly. The SQL Server, whatever you're using it, that is a developer edition. Or the evaluation edition, like six months trial, one year trial. So those things will come under the platform as a service. So these all are divided into different categories in the Azure. So here we have a services. So in all services, they are divided different platforms, different modules, different services. They are just giving as a list, but there are a lot of services we have compared to other cloud providers. Okay, so whatever you want, there is a search button. What we want, we want data factory. Before going to data factory, as per the picture, we required sources, whether it's a on-premises source, whether it's a cloud source. We required some files, some storage. So what I'll do, I'll create storage account. Very simple, all our navigations, you need to just understand how it is working. Based on that, you can implement, okay? 
navigations mostly that is what i'm going to share the recordings documents so that you can go multiple times you will remember it in interviews also the last the step by step subscription this is my subscription what is resource group don't worry for time being i'm going to explain you resource group and resources services okay time being don't worry just to understand how we are implementing it okay i'll explain in the regular class detail level what is resource group how it's going to maintain all the detail level i'll explain just see how we are implementing storage account this is my general storage account and physically this is the data center i am storing in this different data centers you are acting you are storing the data in the google drives you don't know where is the data center there is a, we don't know where is the physical they are maintaining it so this is my data physical data center East US location. So definitely, whenever you take any kind of system hard disk, definitely you will see the performance of the disk, whether standard or premium. Whether you want to go SSD drive, magnetic drive, static drives. So that is what we have. Okay, I'll explain you. Don't worry. So in cloud also, you no need to worry about the backup. What happened if you are storing some data? Definitely, we require deviating or backup team or storage team who work on our backups every day. Here, you no need to worry. You can take as an option for each and every service. There is a redundancy backup. We can use as a backup. Okay. So, fine. Now, just review and create your storage account will be ready and if you want you can parallelly also work parallelly it is validating now and create so it is going to deploy that's it you can only monitor through notification if you want to work parallelly go and one more time work on this one okay one more time now i want data factory I'll create data factory. Parallelly also you can work. Let it be individual deployment. Here also I'm creating one more service. That is a data factory, ETL tool. Okay, in the same project, this is my test ADF. Okay, physical I'm storing. Version by default is version two. Version one, that is completely removed. What is the drawback? What is the advantage? I'll explain in the regular classes, okay? For timing, just review, there is a concept called GitHub. There's a concept called DevOps, we'll see in the regular classes. There's a code repository storing your code. For now, I don't want, I'm just checking later. Later also you can create. Review and create. Okay? Data factory is also ready. What we want, we want database. See, Azure SQL database. Let's go one more tab. Hotel.azure.com. I want database. For database, what generally you do in on premises? You generally you do on on premises, you're going to create SQL Server installation, right? This is what you do. You require set of file, any of this version or you will going to install the setup file. You will go one by one steps to install SQL Server standalone machine installations process. It has to, your system to be up to date. If not, it throw you error to get it update all the things, .NET frameworks. You have to install this all step by step by step. Evaluation edition, enterprise edition, developer edition, which is give you 180 days. Developer is always free, but less amount of features. Okay, there's many steps you have to follow, which service you want to select and all. So same thing, in your Azure, very simple steps. What we want, we want SQL database. 
click on SQL database. Click on create. Very simple step, one page, filling like a form. In the same resource group, I want database name is Azure SQL database. What will happen if you see when I connect to SSMS? To connect to the any server, we require SSMS, okay? See here. So this is my server. I'm connecting with user ID and password. I'm connecting to the database. So this is server, under server you have database. The same way in the database, the server you required, you creating Azure SQL database, Azure SQL database, but you require server to attach this database. So I'm going to create SQL server also. So we need tech SQL server new. Physically deploying in East US, where you are physically installing, you are installing in C drive. And it will decide your C drive space. Whatever happened, it will C drive space. But here, you are not deciding your C drive. Let me show you. So I want to connect with user ID and password. Don't worry, I'll explain this in detail level. User ID and password to connect to the SQL server. Now here you're going to decide how much space you want here. But in your local system, you cannot increase or decrease. If you want standard 100 GB, 200 GB, up to 250 GB. If this is not sufficient, go with higher versions. If this also not sufficient, go with higher versions. Other versions we have. So for now timing, I'm just selecting one GB of disk. And this is costing per month, not the per day. And that also will estimate it cost as it. Okay. So don't worry, it will not detect any single rupee until unless you store. And that also will calculate it per month. So this is your estimated cost, 384 rupees. That is going to pay from your free account. And that also per month. You can calculate it 30 days divided by this one. Storages. Okay. Backup in the local itself, review and create. Simple. Your database is ready now. So, what else we required? Your database structure storage is created, data factory created. This is created. If you have Power BI, connect with the Power BI. If you don't have Power BI, then connect your Excel or query SQL Server and get the data is correct or not. Okay, it is not compulsory to have Power BI. Anything is okay. To verify the data, we require basic SQL. Okay, let's go one by one. Let it get deploy our SQL Server. I'll go to that storage account. First tab, see it is created. I'll just go here. Is my storage account created? Yes, it is created. And now you will find different type of storages in storage account, blob service, file share, table and queues. We want blob service, containers. Here I'll store in folder called container, data log. This is my folder we call as container. Under this folder, I want to upload this file. So you are not going to upload manually, guys. You are not uploading any manually. Who will upload? Your application will write this file. Your application is going to write this file. So this is your DMART application. Whenever somebody performs some billing, that information will pass to this one. And from here, you are extracting it. For time being, I'm uploading here. Okay, for time being, I'm uploading here CSV file or whatever the file it is. So here I'm uploading the file. Browse the path. Where is the path? Which file you want to upload? 
your business was started in Hyderabad location or any other location. Just browse the path and upload. And this is something like a drive. You are saving your files, images. And if you want to share with someone, right click properties and share this link to someone. Share this link to someone. It will work. Okay. File is ready. Can I go to the development now? Our SQL Server is also getting created. Oh, no issues. Let's go with the data factory development. So when you talk about data factory, okay, data factory is required to extract the data from the storage, to load the data in this target. So when you're connecting to the two different storages, here you are connecting, here you are connecting. So this connection we call as linked service. The connection we call here as linked service. And the file selection we call here as data set. The file selection we call as data set. The table selection way to load that we call as data set. This basic terminology is guys. And this is a, I think you feel like it is a new. Yes, it is a new for time being now. If you go complete, you will find this words only data set link service. No other words. For now, you feel like it is a new words. Yes. Okay. I'll go with my development. These only three types we're going to discuss. In that, we are spending 20 to 25 days. So this is a development. This is the development connections. And whatever you develop, you automate here. Automate here. That simple it is. So new development, new pipeline. What is the pipeline? I want to copy the data from one source to target. What is your source? Our source is file, storage account. What is a storage account? Block storage account. We have a block storage account. In that we have a file. So click on new. And now you people see here, this many connections you have. So this connection you won't find in other platforms, CTL platforms. Okay. So this many connections, you want Azure connections, you have a database connection, you have different databases, you have files, general protocols, NoSQL databases, many things. So you can browse it here. You want databases, you want MongoDB, you want unstructured, you can get a Cassandra, DB2, Oracle, SAP, many things, HTTP, API REST, Hadoop, many sort of things we have, Microsoft Excel, ODBC connectivity, Oracle connections, PayPal, REST API, SAP, Salesforce, many, many sort of things, Snowflake, Spark, Teradata, many other things, okay? Yeah, sorry guys, let's see here. So there's a lot of sources, targets we have. So among this, what we want, we want to achieve block storage. This is my source. What sort of file? JSON, Parquet, or any other files that we have. So just select that file format. This is my blob source. data set. So let's connect the connections. This is my link to service. Very simple it is, guys. 
just select which account you have that storage account. My storage account name is this one. Test the connection. If this succeed, click OK. How it is succeeding? How it is happening? I'll tell you later. Okay. Very simple connections. Done. You have a file. Select the file. Browse the data logs. Inside that we have a file. This is a file, right? Is this the same file? Let me check. Yeah, data logs new. This data logs new. I want to select. Okay, done. Click OK. Okay. See, your data set is created. And you want to see the schema. Schema is this format. Data is in the not in a comma separated. The column separated is pipeline symbol. So we need to tell that our column is separating with not the comma with a pipeline symbol. Then I'll import the schema one more time. So it will individually, it will create a columns. And you want to see the data, preview the data also for top sum records. If this is data is coming properly, then no issues. Just go to the pipeline. This pipeline name you can write, moving the data from blog to up to Azure SQL database. This is my pipeline name. Source we configured. And if you want to see here also the data coming properly or not, yes, data is properly coming. What is your target? Our target is SQL database. So is that SQL database created? Let me cross check once again. Yeah, it is created. So this is my database under this server. This is my complete server. You want to access locally, just access in local server also, in local system also. This is my server name. This is my username. And this is the password I'm having it. Want to connect, click on connect. So before connecting, I have to set permissions. What sort of permissions? Some network permissions you have to provide. What is that? I'll explain detail level. Okay. So you have to check this option because you cannot access without checking that option in data factory. The reason is you cannot access the full permissions. Now I'll connect. Okay. This is my VNet SQL server, cloud server. And this is the database. Database name is Azure SQL database, but we don't have any tables. We did not create any table. You don't need to worry. You don't need to create table also. Automatically, table will also will create for you in data factory. Don't have any tables. Okay. Now we'll create the table. Okay. Let's go back. Create a target is your sync. The SQL Server, what sort of SQL Server? It is a SQL Server, Azure SQL Database. And this is my data set. Do you have connections? No, I want to create connection. In the subscription, we have a server name called VNet SQL Server. Database is Azure SQL Database. What is your user ID? This is my user ID. What is the password? What is the password? And properly test the connection. Okay, and click on create. Do you have any table? I don't see any table in my, here, no tables. So you want to create? Yes, I want to create, auto create. The table name is my data. Okay, my data or customer table, customer data. Click OK. And there is an option here, auto create table. Check this option. And do the 
mappings. Very, very important, the mappings in ETL tools. This is your source, this is your target, okay? You want to change some names, change it. Customer name, customer employee ID, customer amount, customer address, you can change it. And just run this package or pipeline. That's important. Which moves the data from your source to target. So this is what we implemented. We created the link service. We create the data set. The data set we assigned here. Whatever the data set we created, this data set we linked. Block we have linked here, this connection. And target we linked here in the sync. So, and this data set contain the connections. File name, table name. Through this, data set through the link service, we are loading the data in the target. That simple it is. See, it is processed. Do you want to see the detail level? Click on this. One file is read, rows are 29 records, and in my target 29 records is written. And my integration unit charged four units. By default, there is a four units. You can set it low also, two also you can set. How much duration it took? Just 14 seconds. Is it loaded or not? Let's cross verify. I'll refresh one more time here. Now you'll find the customer table, customer data. Customer table, just right click and check the data is properly loaded 26 or 27 record, whatever it is there, or processed or not. Twenty nine records are loaded. Again, if you run one more time or by mistake, somebody execute this or started this process, what will happen? The twenty nine record is early morning loaded, and by mistake somebody is loaded. What will happen? The chance of data duplications. There will be a chance of data duplication. Twenty nine plus twenty nine records will be there. that is what we are working as a different loading process. There are different loading process there may be a full load there may be a regular load there may be a delta load there may be an incremental approach incremental load so these are the important loading process if you don't know this loading process don't try any etl tools this is something like basic Whatever you implement, whatever you start loading the data, you are going to specify the structure, any of the structure. Whether you may be load full load, you may be load delta process, you may be implementing incremental. Without this, we cannot implement any pipeline. This is the general load. This is the general like, regular load. 29 plus 29. 58 record is process. So there may be a chance of data duplications. How to handle? We have a different approach. Okay. So like this, we are going to implement, we are going to create multiple components, multiple activities we have. Once the data is there, sir, I don't have a SMS, I don't know sequence, or don't worry. You can connect directly from portal also. I don't want to install SSMS. So directly go here, there's a query editor. You want to see the data in the cloud only? Yes, you can check. Just provide user ID and password or log in with your account. Click OK. It will open the editor. You no need to check in the SSMS also. You have a table. You want to check the data? Just check it. And run it. No, sir, I want to use one more tab. You can use one more tab. In this tab, I just want to check the counts in the query too. How much count of the table? 58 records. You want to see data? You'll find complete data. So you have a platform. And moreover, today you have you have given us one GB of disk. 
If you remember, I have given one GB of disk here. If you go to the overall, if you see monitor tab, you allocated one GB of disk and you got huge transactions, multiple transactions, and you want to increase it. How are you going to, going to increase? So there is a compute option. Immediately you want to increase, you can increase it. How much you're storing? Pay amount that amount only. So here you have that multiple options. You want to increase, click on increase, 2 GB or multiple GBs, how much GBs you want, you can select. Okay, select that and click on apply, simple it is. It will be as click scale in and scale down automatically. So how much GB you have allocated now? Just go to the monitor tab and check. Two GB was increased, more one GB was increased. And used is some 20 something MB, which we just loaded the data. So it is easy and it is scalable. You don't need to worry a separate DBA team to monitor everything, to back up everything. All our redundancy are there. Backups are there. So you just need to focus on ETL approach. So like this, we have different components, different lookup activity, variable activity, append activity, for each loop activity, if activity, there are a number of activities we have going to see in the regular classes. There are different type of integration runtimes, three to four. And then we have the monitor, whatever you scheduled, whatever your development, we are going to schedule. Again, scheduling are the different types, storage event, tumbling, custom event, normal event, and other things are change data capture, newly implemented concept like power query, data flow, transformations. So it is a newly transformations, components. You can add multiple things, components, and transform. These are the transformations. So in between whatever you want to do, attach transformations, whatever sort of transformations you want, attach it and load the data wherever you want. You want to split the data, you can split the data into different targets. So these are the transformations. Okay, these are the change data capture incremental approach. This is the transformation approach. And this is the data flow components. So these are all are going to discuss in regular. Whatever implemented, we are going to schedule it. No other tool is required for data, but that's simple it is. Okay, so I'm going to give you all the details. So in real time, you may find only development one thing is in the right now in the data factories we have the either you get a support project support project in the sense you need to work on already developed kdf you need to work on change request changes and nowadays most of the companies are looking for support with development that means already there is a ssi tool is there they have implemented different approach. Whatever the implemented, you have to work on same in data factory. You have to develop in same in data factory. The other one is you just need to migrate or uh, migrate to data factory from on premises SSIS package to data factory. And this is completely purely development. Whatever you do, completely development this one fully. And some of the in this migrate project or some of the projects you have to develop from scratch. Okay. So for opportunity, don't worry, there are a lot of opportunities on data factory. Moreover, if you are seeing for in India, there are a lot of opportunities. So I'll show you recent offer letter 